Now that I have this dent hammered out and shaped about as good as I can get it with a hammer and dolly technique, I'm going to have to fill it. Fill it with something. I'm going to have to smooth it out. I know there, there are techniques where you can pick and file and pick and file. Uh, there are certain types of individuals who don't want to use any body filler at all. And, you know, in the old days they used to use lead. There still are some people that do that. But, you know, when I first started doing body work back in the 60s, you know, uh, body filler didn't have a very good reputation. You know, it had a tendency to shrink and crack and, and bubble up after a time. But over the last 50 years, there's been a lot of improvements in auto body filler. And I've got a bunch of samples here. We're going to talk about those. So don't be, don't be afraid. I mean, you're going to hear, oh, no, I never use body filler, you know. <laughs> well, good luck. I mean, at some point, you're going to have to smooth that surface out. And, and the, the problem is not the filler, okay? It's not the filler. It's the preparation. And it's how the filler is applied. And it's misuse of the filler. And so that's what I want to talk about in part two in this series. I just want to talk about the, the, fill, the body filler, okay? You've heard it called Bondo. But Bondo's like Kleenex. Not all Kleenex is made by the Kleenex company. And not all Bondo is, is made by Bondo, which is now a 3M company. So um, I... I I know some of you are laughing. You're saying, well, hey, Kent, what kind of body filler is that? Look at that. Am I trying to hide it? Uh, yes, I am. You know, my, my intent here, and I, I, you know, I see this a lot on YouTube, and I, I just don't want to get into the argument of what is the best. Okay, that's not the purpose of this video. So I have covered up. I have covered up the manufacturer of the fillers that we're going to be talking about so we don't lose sight of the real issue here and that's type of filler, where best it is used and how to properly apply it. We won't be getting into the application in, in part two here. I just want to talk about the three. Now there's more than three but there's three basics, okay? Uh, I've got the, I've got the, the, you know, the standard filler that most people use. I've got the the filler over here that has short strands of fiberglass embedded in it. I've got the filler over here that has long strands of fiberglass embedded in it. And then here's a, here's a special filler that's used to, to fill cracks and bumpers. It's a flexible filler. And that's where you want to use that on, on these plastic type of bumpers. And then in the back here, I've got a filler that's kind of a specialty filler. It's got aluminum pigment in it. It's designed when you, you, you really have something that you want it to really stick and, and really prevent any moisture absorption. We'll talk about the moisture absorption issues a little bit later. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to talk about these three basic types and talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. So right here on this, this piece of wax paper, I actually mixed the three of these last night and put a, put a, a you know, big chunk of it there so we can... We can kind of talk about that, and I'll show you a few uh, characteristics of each when we move in close here. So uh, we'll get the camera in close. I'm going to open up each one of these cans. I'm going to show you what the fillers look like, and then I'm going to show you these samples, and once again, we'll move into some of the advantages and disadvantages of using each type. I'm going to begin by opening up each of these three types of body filler and just kind of show you what it looks like and the consistency of it. Um, this is the premium or what I call the final finish filler. Um, notice when you, when you let it sit, you know, it doesn't, uh, it will start to separate. So mixing is always real important. But look at this. Look at how smooth this is. See that? It's very smooth, very runny. If uh, it gets too old and sits around a long time, it can get hard and lumpy and hard to work with. So um, I don't recommend pushing it with real old filler. But this is, this is a premium grade filler right here. I recommend uh, you don't skimp on the cheapest filler out there because the sanding characteristics and how it plugs the sandpaper and all those other issues will not pay off for you. It won't be wise to use cheap 
filler. Okay, now one of the things you want to have handy uh, when you're working with body filler, of course, is a nice roll of blue shop towels. And you can use either alcohol or lacquer thinner to clean uh, the filler off your tools before it dries. But lacquer thinner works a little better, but it smells bad. So I tend to use um, alcohol unless I'm in an outside or in a really good vented area. So I'll, I'll clean this off a little bit. I don't have to be perfect. Now, let's set the premium aside over here. And let's take a look at what's called the short strand. Now, all three of these have polyester resin as a base, but it's what they put in with the polyester resin that makes them so different. The premium over here has a, a light powder that's put in it, which makes it smooth and kind of runny. And when you get into the short strand uh, type of filler, it's quite different. And you look down in the can here, um, you know, it's, it's a little thicker. And when you stir it up a little bit, once again, these tend to separate. But notice when I, when I pull it out, see that? Look at that. You can tell by looking closely that there are very, very fine strands of fiberglass embedded in this polyester resin. And notice how it tends to want to hold together. See that? It's, it's quite a bit stickier and it's much more difficult to smooth it out when you're actually applying it to a dent uh, on, on, a, on a damaged car. Okay, we'll put the lid on this one. This one has a little bit stronger smell. Once again, I'll just wipe the putty knife off a little bit. Okay, now let's open up the long strand. Now the long strand is the same as the short strand, but the fiberglass that they put into it is much longer. It's not chopped. Now watch the difference when I pull this out. You can actually look down in there and see some of the strands. But look at this. You see? It really tends to hold together. See that? The strands are much longer, and it will hold together quite a bit better than the short strand. Now, you might be thinking, well, OK, where do you use these? And, and why would you use one over the other? OK, well, we'll get into that a little bit later in this video. So I think you got to see the three types up close. Now, I want, I want to move this sample over, because I think this sample will show um, some of the characteristics be better than just looking in the can. So what I, what I did is I mixed up about the same amount last night. Uh, this is your premium uh, finish filler here. Uh, this is the long strand here, and here's the short strand. You can tell there, there's quite a difference just looking at them. Now here's something interesting. Okay, this, this is wax paper. And body filler shouldn't stick to wax paper. You're going to learn later on in this series of videos how important it is to abrade or to rough up the surface wherever you're applying any type of filler. But I want to show you first the stickiness, the stickiness of these three types. And, uh, you know, it should just kind of come off the wax paper, right? Well, let's go over here to the, the premium filler, and I'm going to pull on it. Let's see. Let's see how it comes up off this wax paper. Look at that. It just comes right off. See that? Very smooth, very slippery on this side. And now when I, when I put this down, I did push, I did push on the uh, putty knife when I applied it. OK, so there's your premium finish filler. Now let's look at this long strand. I'm going to pull this off the paper. OK, it also comes off, see? But it's a little bit stickier. See that? It's got a little bit more grab, and you can tell by looking at the wax paper, it's actually pulling some of the wax off there. See that? So this, this has a better adhesion than this here. OK, now let's, let's come over here and let's try to pull this one up. OK. <laughs> We're going to pull up this short strand. Okay, it's coming about the same, but it's a little 
little bit stickier. Look at that. And you can probably see in the video here the difference. This one, the short strand, even pulled off more of the wax on the paper than the other two did. So it's the short strand that kind of wins the battle of adhesion. And that's real important. That's real important as we get into this series and we talk about um, where you run into adhesion problems. The other thing that's interesting about these three different types, remember this has a, this has a powder similar to a talc that is mixed in with the polyester resin. It gives it that real lightweight feel and it gives it the ability to sand easily, okay? But there's a downside to this. This will absorb moisture because it's porous, okay? So um, you don't want, uh, if you're going to apply this to a piece of bare metal, make sure you don't let any moisture get to it until it's properly sealed. And once again, we'll talk more about that later. These other two, this is a, once again, a polyester resin, which has long fiberglass strands in it. And it's much more water resistant. Both of these are very water resistant. They're not going to absorb moisture through the fiberglass or through the filler onto the metal like your standard premium finish grade fillers will. Okay, so that kind of gives you uh, an idea of some of the characteristics of the three of these. Now let's put them to what I will call the flexibility test. And this is real important because a lot of the problems with body filler that cracks has to do with flexibility. You know, if you have a have something that expands and contracts and the filler is not very flexible, it's going to crack. Also the amount of thickness. Now let's start out with this right here, our premium finish filler. I'm going to come out on the end here where it's fairly thin and we're going to bend it. Okay, watch. We're going to bend it. Okay, I get a little, oh, see that? I got a little bit of bend there, but it immediately broke off. Okay, let's come back over here where it's thicker. And if I bend it, it's not going to flex at all. Watch this. Say, no flex. Immediately it breaks. So you might right away understand why body filler can crack. Uh, it's not only how it's applied, where it's applied, but how thick it's applied. And we'll be discussing that more later. Now, if I take this little piece off over here, Okay, that's pretty thin. Now this is how I like to apply body filler. Uh, uh, you know, you'll hear, you'll hear people say, well, don't get it more than a quarter of an inch thick. I personally don't like to get this type of body filler any more than a sixteenth of an inch thick. And this is why. See, there's a little bit of flex to it. See that? A little bit of flex to it, but it does break and it breaks quite easily. Okay, let's move over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the the short strand next and show you what happens when uh, you apply this and we'll, we'll give this the flexibility test too but look, take a look here let's start let's start bending it let's see when it breaks okay okay we got it we go, oh, look at that we got a pretty good pretty good pretty good bend there pretty good bend look at that I'm almost at 45 degrees before that broke <laughs> and this this is tough stuff so when you put this on, you can put this on thicker and it will survive much better the onslaught of expansion, contraction, vibration, and other types of abuse. Okay, so there's the short strand. Now let's take a look at the long strand. You're already thinking, well, that long strand, you should be able to bend it all the way around. Well, not necessarily so. It, it can still break, but watch the amount of flex in this. See? Now it's coming around, it's breaking about the same. So what you find out here is there's not a huge advantage in using long strand over the short strand in terms of flexibility where it does, where it does really pay off to use a long strand is where you're bridging holes and you need the strength across an open hole. This might, this is typical of what you might use to repair a hole in a fiberglass boat. And if you're going to use it to repair rust out, 
in a car there's some real downsides and I'm going to talk about that uh, later in this series. Okay, so there you have it. Which would you rather use, okay? <laughs> well, obviously you're thinking, well, I think, I think the short strand would be, uh, might be the better. And I like using the short strand because the long strand, if you notice how rough it is, it's really with those long fiberglass strands, it's really difficult to get this smoothed out and leveled out. The, the short strand is much easier to get it leveled out, but let me tell you, if you let this get hard and try to sand it, you better be young and tough, not old like me, because you're going to literally wear yourself out trying to sand this. This sands, even though it breaks easily, say, without any flex, it, it certainly sands easy and it certainly shapes a lot easier than either of these other two. I hope you found that little comparison between the three fillers interesting. I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, Ken, it looks like, you know, maybe I should use the short strand all the time because it has, it has some obvious advantages, <laughs> except one, <laughs> unless you've ever tried to sand short strand, unless you've ever tried to sand it smooth and prime it. It's, fill, it's full of roughness and pinholes and so it does not make, it does not make a good finish filler. It makes a great base, and we'll be talking more about that in, in uh, future parts in the series. But for the purpose of the dent in this Mercedes that I hammered out uh, for you, um, we only need to use the, the premium filler because I, I'm not going to be putting this on more than a sixteenth of an inch thick. And, uh, you know, I don't, you don't want to try to use sh uh, a short strand or long strand for a small dent like that. Th th those two have specific applications, okay? Specific applications for really, really serious body work. And later on, I'll show you a couple examples where I use these. But what we want to be able to do is get, uh, get the filler on this small dent here which is already well shaped and get it smoothed out just like a brand new fender. One of the other problems, I didn't mention this, but one of the other problems with these three is they all have different sanding characteristics. So if you were to use the three of them together where all three of them were breaking through the surface, you'd have a terrible time leveling it because the, uh, the premium sands very easily. The short strand sands a little better than the long strand. So you would end up trying to sand this surface with all three of these fillers showing and you'd get, you'd get this kind of surface. You follow what I'm saying? So you can't use them that way. If you're going to use short strand or long strand, you've got to use it as a base and then you may have to make sure that you completely cover it with your finished filler. So all your final sanding, nowhere can any of this break through the surface or it's going to show uh, in your final product. So. We're, for, the, for the next few parts in this series, we're going to set these aside and we're going to concentrate on this premium finish filler that we have here. And we're going to uh, go about applying it to this Mercedes front fender and smoothing out this dent. But before we get into that, there, there's some real issues I need to talk about. And I know a lot of problems are caused and that's improper mixing and improper spreading okay this is what you have to mix it's a catalyst and the catalyst has to be mixed properly if you mix too much catalyst it gets too hard and it can shrink that's one of the things that cause tra cracking if you don't mix enough enough catalyst it doesn't dry hard and it's real gummy so it plugs your sandpaper so it's real critical that this gets properly mixed at the right ratio so in the next part in this series, I'm going to talk about mixing procedures, mixing ratios, and the different types of tools that you'll need to be able to apply it smoothly with the minimal, and I'm going to repeat, minimal amount of sanding.